I heard a great story recently about a little six-year-old boy named David. He was taking a walk with his grandmother one day, and they decided to take a little detour and walk through a cemetery. They stopped and they read several of the tombstones that, that were there, and the grandmother explained to her little six-year-old David grandson He's, she said, David, now this first date on the tombstone is the date when the people were born. And the second date on the tombstone is the date when they died. David was fascinated by that. He looked at all the tombstones and he's looking at the different dates and he noticed some of the tombstones just had one date on them. He was mesmerized by that and he said, Grandma, how come some of the tombstones only have one date on them? And she said, oh, those are the people who haven't died yet. He said, oh, hmm. He went home that night, and he couldn't stop thinking about that. He told his mama, he said, Mama, 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 guess what? Did you know that some of the people who were buried in the cemetery aren't dead yet? <laughs> Leave it to a six-year-old to put a twist on things, right? But Jesus put the biggest twist on death that has ever been put on our concept of death and life. Jesus put a twist on it. For you see, Easter is all about that one four-letter word, life. Renewed life resurrected life, rejuvenated life, new life, whole life, abundant life. Life as a precious gift for each and every one of us. Life is that gift that God has given to us to do miraculous things on earth with the gifts of time and skills that God has blessed each one of us with. And I dare say no person who is healthy physically and emotionally is eager to die. We hold on to this gift of life knowing how precious it is. Life is too wonderful for us to welcome death as a friend when we are healthy physically and emotionally on this side of heaven. You know, the story is told about a man who went to the doctor one day for a complete physical. He said he hadn't been feeling well for a long time, and he decided it was about time to figure out what the problem was. So he went to the doctor, and the doctor ran several different tests, and then the doctor went back in and told the patient, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, sir. You're dying, and you don't have much time. Oh, my goodness, the man said, that's quite a shock. How much time do I have? And the doctor answered, 10. 10? Are you talking about 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years? And the doctor said, 10, 9, 8. <laughs> We laugh, but deep in our hearts, we know that part of Easter resurrection life is that death is not the end of us, that we are given life after death, that Jesus defeated death when he was raised from the tomb that day. And yet God has still instilled within each one of us a deep desire to live on this side of heaven as fully as we can to live an abundant, joy-filled, laughter-filled life on this side of heaven. We are created for life on this side of heaven. So it's interesting when you talk to young children about what they understand about death and dying. I tell you, some nine-year-olds were once asked what they thought about death and dying, and this is what some of them said. A little boy named Jim said, when you die, they bury you in the ground and your soul goes up to heaven, but your body can't go because it's already too crowded up there in heaven. 
Don't you love that? A little girl named Judy said, only the good people go to heaven. The other people go to a place where it's hot all the time, like Florida. <laughs> we can say that being in South Carolina, right? Yeah. Little Marsha said, when you die, you don't have to do your homework in heaven unless your teacher is there too. <laughs> now, does that mean she thinks some teachers don't go to heaven? I hope not, because my daughter and son-in-law are both teachers. Yeah. Well, it's true. This little boy named John spoke to many, spoke for many of us when he said, maybe I'll die someday, but I hope I don't die on my birthday because it's not much fun to celebrate your birthday when you're dead. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe we do celebrate birthdays in heaven. Maybe we do. Maybe we celebrate, like it's our birthday all the time, the new life that we've been given because Jesus rose from the dead. At some point in all of our lives, we have to face what death is like and understand that death does not have the final word for any of us. And we understand that as people who are followers of Jesus Christ. But my friends, what I want you to leave here today embracing more than the promise of life after death is the fact that life is worth living today because Jesus rose from the dead. And the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the power that can help us overcome the difficulties that we face every day on this side of heaven. I know from many of the people that I talk to over the years of my ministry, that one of the things that many of us feel these days is that life is difficult. And life often seems out of control for us and unmanageable. So many things happen in this world that are unmanageable that we don't have control over. They just happen to us. We understand that, especially if we're parents, right? We can't control the life that our children have. We can't protect them from everything that might happen to them in this world. I remember reading about a man named Charlie Shedd who wrote several books and went around the country giving lectures. He tells this story on himself. He said, before we had kids, I used to travel across the country teaching a lecture I called Ten Commandments for Raising Perfect Kids. Now that was before I had kids. After Marcia, Marcia and I had our first child, I had to change the title of my lecture to 10 Hints for Parents. But then after I had the second child, I had to relabel my lecture again to a few tentative suggestions for fellow strugglers. And after we had the next child, I just gave up on speaking about the topic. Maturity, my friend, is when we figure out that life is not something that we can control, but it's something that we can manage and we can overcome those difficulties because the risen Christ walks with us and the power of the resurrection that raised Christ from the dead will raise us to new life no matter what difficulties we face on this side of heaven. Now, I don't know what difficulties each one of you brought into the sanctuary today, but I know that every one of us struggles somewhere in life. Every one of us faces challenges and has pain and has difficulty in this world at one time or another. So I want you to hold on to the good news today the good news that Jesus rising from the dead, that that power of resurrection will give you the power to face whatever difficulties and problems you have in the world today, knowing that that power is with you. Because when Jesus ascended to heaven, he promised to send the Holy Spirit to empower us to live the abundant life here and now. 
In the Gospel of John, we read that Jesus himself said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly in the here and now. Abundantly. One more story. When the great athlete Roger Bannister set out to break the four-minute mile, most track coaches said he could not do it. In fact, the previous record was just over four minutes, and it had stood undefeated for nine years, which led most people to believe that it was impossible to run in under four minutes. Even Bannister himself was skeptical, and he said, at first I wasn't sure, but I knew my trainer believed in me. He really believed I could do it, and because he believed in me and expected the most from me, I kept believing in myself and trying my best. On May 6, 1954, he was 6 feet 1 inches tall, 25 years old, and he was a medical student at Oxford. He was running on the university's track team before a crowd of a thousand people, mostly students. And he was running with a two-year-old memory of the disappointment still burning inside of him. You see, he had been expected and expected of himself to win the 1,500 meters, the metric mile, at the 1952 Olympics. Even the Duke of Edinburgh had timed his visit to Helsinki in order to share in that excitement for that final run. But Bannister was jostled. He was jostled and he finished fourth. Only a remarkable performance down the road could ever erase that disappointment in his life. But he achieved it. On Oxford's track that day in May, Roger Bannister ran the first sub four minute mile in recorded history. He completed the distance in three minutes, 59.4 seconds. He was named Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year and in an interview for the magazine, he was asked to explain the art of record breaking. And he answered with original directness when he said, it's the ability to take more out of yourself than you've got. The ability to take more out of yourself than you've got. My friends, that that's what the resurrected Jesus can do for each one of us. Take more out of ourselves than we think we have. Jesus said, you can do immeasurably more because I am with you. Greater things than Christ did when he walked the earth, we are able to do because of that power of the resurrection within us. So remember, the power of the resurrection is with you, both now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.